Try and do some of these, though. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to Friday the 13th panel here at Scarefest. My name's Ben, I'm with Gun Media. I've got Kane Hunter, I've got Wes Kelly. Actually, I should be like telling you. I think we all know who everyone is, right? I mean, should, everyone nod your heads? Uh, just for posterity. Kane Hunter. <laughs> Casey Firewater. Wes Kelly, mustache extraordinaire. Also, co-creator of Friday the 13th game. Harry Van Verdini, composer. Oh, you're going to hear that a lot. Ronnie Hobbs, co-creator as well, and just puzzling the two and angry and stuff. Tom Savini, absolutely. We've got the creator, Sean S. Cunningham. We've got Dan Garcia, Bill Fonick. He's the lead programmer for the game, so he's the one that's absolutely making this game gorgeous. And we've got... That's many of you might know. Randy, Randy, we've got our executive director. So this is your panel. Uh, what we're going to be doing, we're going to do a little bit of talk about the Friday 13th game, but today is more for you guys. We really appreciate this. This is a horror convention. We're here to support horror, to support Friday 13th. So we're going to ask you guys, you guys will ask us questions, and we'll just screw around. All right. <coughs> I'll start out with just giving a quick, like, what is the game? I'm sure everyone already knows that, but we'll just give a quick rundown of what it is. It's a multiplayer focus game for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Um, in the game you play is either Jason or the counselors. Uh, that is known as asymmetrical in gameplay. Like what you're doing as Jason is not the same thing as you're doing as a counselor. Of course, Jason's sole job is to, of course, kill. Um, whereas the counselors have many different uh, methods that they can choose to get themselves out of Crystal Lake. Um, and again, you can ask those kind of questions and get those details in a minute. Um, right now we have three for the game, um, sort of a medium, medium, large, and large is one way to look at. Um, one of them is Higgins Haven. The other one is uh, just Crystal Lake, uh, Camp Crystal Lake, or proper, if you will. And a third we haven't announced yet, but we will be announcing really soon. So that's kind of the quick and dirty on the game. We are shooting for a fall release, uh, which means from now until you know December twentieth or whatever. Uh, so we we don't have a publisher that's right on top of us making us hit a date on a calendar. So that's a nice thing for us because we get to say it's kind of done when it's done. Uh, we've waited, everyone's waited a long time to have a proper Friday 13th game. Uh, so what we don't want to do is rush it. Uh, we want to make sure it's, it's perfect. So can a, can a male counselor seek out a female counselor? <laughs> take her into the shed and pull the smart out of her? Should it? No, not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> can you define Pork and shit. Oh, snot. Pork? Are you going to stop to have sex? He's so romantic. But that's why you're changing it, right? Because you're having sex. No, we, uh, we can do nudity for sure. We can't do sex because uh, the ESRB, which is the equivalent of the Motion Picture Association. Who said sex? That says pork and the smart <laughs> Anyway, we, we can't do that because, of course, we would get an adult-only rating, and you can't be on an Xbox or a PlayStation if you have an AO rating. Uh, so we have to try to keep it in the M category or R if you were related to a film. So anyway, I think it's probably smartest if we like open up with some questions. Um, I'm sure everyone has their own different. We can talk about gameplay. We can talk about how these things come together, et cetera, et cetera. Ben, and before we do that, uh, how about everybody, like, just a little spiel about who you guys are, so that when people are trying to get their questions, they can directed at the correct person, just in case you don't know who you're talking to. You know Does I mean. anybody not know somebody up here? Anyone? All right. Okay. So uh, we got mics up there for us. I got mics up here. Uh, just in case, been uh, immersed in the, in the Friday stuff for, for a while, and <clears throat> been along two days. And I'm sitting, and I say, OK, I'm relaxing. And I look out in the audience, I pan across. And Jason's sitting in the audience, just like a member of the audience. And I, my head comes back as, as if I imagined it. I did. I, I really, their head were really, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does anyone else see Jason? I don't see Jason. <laughs> There's no Jason here. What's really scary is Jason, Jason has a date with that. I think it's even better. <laughs> This is when you cut back to the empty chair. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Go. All right, so 
uh, what I'll do is I will walk over to you. If you've got a question, just raise your hand. <coughs> wow, this is going to be a short panel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. I got my first question. Uh, did you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so with a lot of asymmetric games, uh, it seems like longevity isn't as long as what it could be. What are you guys planning to do to make it where the, like, the gameplay be fun and long lasting for an extended period of time? Because like, the ball is such a good example. to take that one? Okay, I'll lead out there. Uh, so, well, first and foremost, uh, we're Friday 13, so we've got a, a lot of sort of a, a nice palette we get to dip into, right? Like there's some cool stuff in that all the films that we get to touch and put into potentially future content for the game. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that fans want. Uh, some of those things were like Kickstarter uh, tiers we tried to hit, but it didn't quite hit. Uh, those are things we may be able to do in the future. So those just the, just those things I think will keep a lot of people excited uh, to, to continue to come back and play, as well as new levels. Like it's interesting in our play tests that the size of the level and the amount of exterior gameplay versus interior gameplay completely changes the sort of the feeling and the tone while you're playing. It, right? If you're if the if the map is is primarily an exterior, so there's a lot of woods, maybe not as many buildings to get into. Then you're sort of like running hair on fire type of thing, right? Just trying to get out of, you know, it, when you're outside, you're very vulnerable, right? Like Jason's going to be able to find you a lot quicker than, for example, in an interior where you have a lot of hiding spots. You have a window you can jump out. You have you know, some doors to go through, et cetera, et cetera. So it, whenever you start to, to introduce new maps that may have far more focus on interior gameplay, then it kind of slows it down a little bit. It makes it a little bit more cat and mouse. It makes it in my opinion, there's like a, a, the stealth component in that makes it sort of a scary, like, hold your breath moment. Whereas if you're in an exterior type of gameplay, it's more of just, you're, you're, you're running your face off trying to get, you know, from A to B. And it, it, there's a lot of things that can go wrong in an exterior situation. Um, so that's, what, that's one thing to also like keep, keep longevity is that a new map actually genuinely changes how you play. The next piece of that is people that play as Jason play them differently. Like Ronnie is a stealth Jason, and I, I like to do some some bruiser and a little bit of stealth, and meaning that he's going to play in the shadows a little more. He's going to stand in the window and stare in the window and like creep people out before he ever attacks them, uh, which does affect like fear in the game. Fear is an important thing that you're you need to manage while you're playing. Whereas I like to chop through the door, bust through it, and you know get the, the sort of the jump scare. So it's those different types of gameplay, different types of how you portray Jason is different every time, right? And then you get on top of that the procedural content, you know, where vehicles are, they're not the same place every time. How the cabins are sort of laid out in the world. It's not you may you may go over the hill and say there's supposed to be a cabin here, but this time you played there wasn't one, right? But just that kind of content to keep it fresh. So you know, I think the last thing you mentioned was about I think you said just making counselor gameplay fun. I think was the last thing. He thing. was looking for uh, if you want to play as Jason a lot. I don't think so. No, not so much that. It's so much like if everyone wants to be Jason, how do you make yeah. like just regular counselor yeah. gameplay? I'll, I'll let Dave and just for a second. But one thing about Evolve is, in my opinion, the reason I stopped playing that game is because it, it required absolute teamwork. So if you don't have other people online that are talking and they're not using their class correctly, the game falls flat. You can't win, there's no one to help you, no one's talking, it's chaos. Our counselors can all do the same thing, just a few of them can do certain things better. So the jock is better with a melee swing than, say, the nerd. But the, the bookish girl is better with stealth than the jock is. So everyone can swing a weapon, everyone can fix a car or a vehicle, everyone can run and hide, but you just have to pick the trope that you like that, that allows you to play the way you want to. But there's no action that you have to work together in our game. So that opens up a lot of scenarios where <coughs> Sure, there's seven people on the map trying to help each other, but when it comes down to it, they're probably going to just throw you on the bus if they can and not help you when Jason shows up. So, Yeah, and, and, and the gameplay is it, just jumping off that point. Really, there are a lot of emerging things happen just naturally because everybody has different goals. Sometimes one goal is cut off by Jason. He's, he's, he's uh, stocking the car and you can't get it repaired, but everybody invested all their time 
and they get in the car parts. But now uh, a few of the councils can run down and try to get a boat going, and uh, the other ones can say, okay, let's go uh, call the police, and maybe we, we can escape that way. So like every 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 round, every match. Uh, we play out completely differently because everybody makes different choices, but also there's just so many variations on what can happen and depending on the goals that uh, everybody chooses to pursue. So it's just, it's, it's a lot more fun and there's a lot, it's, it's kind of like we are giving the players the tools to make their own little horror movies. Like the last part of the movie where, you know, er most everybody's going to die and maybe only some, but one person gets out. But that's, that's kind of our goal is to empower people to kind of have all these different experiences so they have the water cooler moments the next day they can tell their friends what they did and uh, how, how their games played out that night before and then hopefully draw more people into the game to keep the community alive as well. Uh, to give you an idea, when we're doing our play testing, what a lot of time is going on, none of us are saying, I want to be Jason, I want to be Jason. And we all love playing each and every class, every character, each Jason. I mean, we really and honestly believe that when this game comes out, people aren't going to be familiar. <laughs> I mean, that, obviously, there's going to be people that are like, I have to be Jason, but they're still going to love gameplay when they're counting. Like, we do not want you to ever feel like you're disappointed because you got stuck playing a character. You're going to have a lot of choice, and you're going to love playing a character. And it, uh, admittedly, I'm a little biased, but I genuinely play, I genuinely enjoy playing as a counselor. Like, it's, it's a lot, a lot of fun. It's a lot more fun than you think it would be. <coughs> Um, because it's, when you're playing Jason, it's all power fantasy, right? Like it's, you're, you're getting to go in, you're getting to be Jason, you're getting to murder people. But when you're playing as a counselor, it's, it's much more like watching a horror movie, right? Like you're getting the jump scares, you're being attacked. It's you in that situation. And that in its own just produces a ton, a ton of fun. Also, as a quick aside, um, <clears throat> we're friends with Turtle Rock, um, the guys that made Evolve. Just, just, just throw it on eye. Um, They've changed the game quite a bit. It's gone completely free to play. Uh, you should check it out again. I think it's a lot better. They learned a lot. They learned a lot of this. Um, they fixed a lot of their mistakes. And I think it's a lot better. You should you should give it another chance. I like these guys. Hard <laughs> film. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, I like to also add that I think a lot of you know Friends of Teeth fans want to play as the douchebag jock, or they want to play as Shelly. Hopefully, not everybody wants to play as Jason. But uh, let's get to the question. All right, cool, cool. I want to say, you know, genuinely, um, you know, thank you guys for making the game as a gamer and a Friends of Thief fan for life. Uh, I, know you guys, I know the game started out as a game called Summer Camp, right? As an inspiration to, to the movies that came, you know, the Friends of Thief movies. And then, you know, I'm not sure how this happened, but I know Sean, you guys got connected with him, and then he allowed you guys to use the property. And specifically, Sean, can you talk about what drove you to allow them to use, you know, your book, your baby, you know what I mean? And uh, that whole, the whole situation. Oh, sure. <laughs> the, um, the history of, uh, of Friday the 13th involves a whole bunch of people um, pitching. Um, well, it's two things <laughs> TV series and video games. And they never seem to work. And um, after 20 some odd years, um, I was finally talking with a friend about a possible video game. And he was really very knowledgeable gaming guy. I said, gee, that sounds, that's really interesting. And we decided to pursue it. And in doing that, um, discovered that summer camp was doing a whole bunch of stuff that we contemplated doing. And um, there's all the due diligence and you know, people going around checking other people out. And, and Gun is really a, a great company and good guys. They, absolutely love the material, and they get it. And it was uh, it was time. And so um, ever since we made the deal, it, it's just been um, a pleasure. And you know, every month or two, you know, you get to see another little piece of it. You say, holy cow, that's great. That's really, really interesting. Um, and, I, and I think it's gonna be fun, so. I think that this is uh, this is the right time and with the right people, and I have every uh, confidence it's going to be good. It's going to be great. I'm sorry, not good. Great. It's going to be. It's going to be huge. Massive. All right. And well, imagine how we felt just hearing that. Yeah. Growing up watching Friday 13th and being fans just like you. 
hiding under the covers and peeking out and seeing Friday 13th Part 1 and 2 and seeing Tom's work and seeing Kane and, and to hear Sean say those things that he has taken me pretty well. So. For sure. Anybody? Questions? Random questions. Just ask them. Big yeah, numbers. Yeah. Ask me anything. You got Tom to think about it. <laughs> All right. Good question for Tom. How about this guy? What? <laughs>
honestly, it was, it was fun while we did it. Um, I was looking for, it just, it was, you can do that for so long until you're kind of tired of telling someone else how to make your game better, whenever it, it's more fun to start from nothing and be like, this is, we're gonna make this whole game instead of like, make someone else's game better. And they, you know, get to make all the money from it. Like that, that, you can only do that so many times for you're kind of like, bored with that. Um, and then before that, we were working with a lot of uh, game companies that were, trying to understand brands and advertising and advertising brands are trying to understand games and so we were kind of back and forth between those two worlds working with companies like Ford Motor Company and a bunch of brands that are Unilever and stuff like that and that would go back to like Xbox and the EA and Ubisoft and stuff and kind of everyone was learning from each other and we were sort of the translators between the two if that makes sense but. So you guys have all known each other for a while. I mean, it's even been going back before that. Video game, we were video game journalists. Yeah. And writing reviews since we were like 18 years old, sneaking our way into E3, sneaking our way into parties, like sleeping on park benches at E3, trying to just go and meet video game developers and fans. And yep. Randy's been in games for 20 years and more out for work. And we met him. We actually met him through, through Ben. Ben, yeah. Because Ben was also a journalist. I was a journalist at a business to business website, and then I got a press release from these two, and it was 859, and I was in Cincinnati at the time. What? So I conned him into thinking that I know things. And Keyword con. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what that uh, <laughs> decision I regret. <laughs> yeah. uh, but they started uh, talking breach and clear, and I, I'm a nerd when it comes to military stuff in the way that Ronnie's a nerd when it comes to uh, Friday 13. So helped out with that, and then I hooked up with Ronnie, or I'm sorry, with uh, Randy through a mutual friend, and he eventually brought in the expertise. And, that's how we all kind of got together. And Randy worked on Ghost Recon, and so our first game was military focused, and so yeah. we kind of all got together on that, and then uh, yeah. just kind of kept, kept growing from there. I mean, the, the summer camp started as us sitting in the office spitballing, wouldn't it be cool? And that's where most ideas come from. Mm -hmm. And today we're sitting here, I mean, with legendary horror guys and bringing Friday 13th. Seriously, when we're in our office, we see what you guys do on social media. We see the posts that we're getting, the comments. And, I mean, over 15 million people have seen our kills video. You guys have seen the kills video, right? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. We're <laughs> we're just, yeah. Yeah, we released a video that has 13 of uh, Tom Savini's kills. And Kenny Hodder is obviously doing the mocap. He's playing Jason again in our game, if you didn't know. Yeah, he's playing in our booth. Come by and watch it. <laughs> It's not easy on the eyes. It's uncomfortable, but it's Kane. Or on the ears. Yeah, or on the ears. It's Kane doing his work as Jason again. He finally gets to play Jason again, so that's awesome. Yeah. And then Tom is designing the kills, and then Dan and his guys at the Monarch are putting the kills together, and it's this big, long process. Each kill takes us at least a month to do. Each Jason model we make is about two months of work. Um, you, know, you still want to be you still want to be Kane hotter than walk around and kill people, right? Of or you want to run from Kane? Who wants to try to survive Kane? So, right now, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really stuck on it. But actually, I'm gonna just kind of like ask a question to sort of prime this because I think it's a good time to talk about it. But the di Kane, the difference between when you're taking on the role of Jason in a film and like the, how you get prepared for that, how you take on that personality, compare that to then. You know, several months ago, we walked into the motion capture studio. First of all, you had to put spandex on, so I know it's difficult. <laughs> Very difficult. It was difficult for me to see you in spandex. <laughs> um, I know, you were attracted. I know. <laughs> I understand. He asked me to apply the grease to him, but didn't put it on. That's where I'm like, I draw a line. <laughs> but now, why don't you go into detail? He's talking about the differences between those things um, and how it was one easier than the other, or et cetera, et cetera. Well, I mean, uh, at the beginning, doing the mocap was a little tricky because of how I looked. I mean, let's face it, you know, if you're wearing all the, the makeup and the mask and everything, you feel more in character. So I think it was a little more challenging to feel in character wearing the, the mocap suit, but it didn't seem to take long to feel like I was back there because and I've talked about this before, even in the Jason panel I talked about, I went on too long about it, and fucking people gave me shit about oh, talking too much about it. Whiner. What a whiner. But uh, I, you know, I, uh, I felt, first of all, I felt honored that they wanted me to do it, and I was very happy to do so. But the fact that I could be 
be on the mocap stage in that spandex and look at a monitor and see myself immediately animated as the character. I, maybe that's pure ignorance and stupid that I didn't realize that would be the case because I, I did motion capture for a similar game eight or nine years ago that was shelved and never came out. And they didn't have the capability of instantaneously animating me. So whatever movements I was doing on the stage, I could watch on the screen and see them moving as Jason. So that helped me feel a little more in character. And then, you know, once I started doing the, the violence and stuff, it just, uh, it all came back pretty easily. Well, I don't care what I'm wearing, I'm gonna break your fucking back. <laughs> I'm gonna twist your head off and, you know, do that stuff. So. Yeah, I may look different, but hopefully I, I don't act any differently, and and uh, it's just been a lot of fun, and uh, I'm just very, very appreciative that, uh, you know, I'm doing it, because uh, it does feel good to be back as the character. I have a question. Well, why are you wearing a tutu? That's what I want. <laughs> uh, in my case, it was a 4-4, four -four, but... Um. <laughs> okay, for the guys at Gun and up on it, uh, when the horror community found out that we're getting the Friday the 13th game, um, we kind of heard collectively, it better not suck, over and over and over again, because that's <laughs> the they first one did. Well, I didn't want to say anything, but maybe. Um, <laughs> But now the reaction is getting really, really, you know, positive. But what has the pressure been like for you guys, especially at Elphonic, what has the pressure been like? Because you have some really tough critics that you're going to have to impress. Dan? Yeah. Oh, the hype is real. <laughs> it's real, real. And most of the dev team is online at all times. Like, we see all of the stuff. We, you know, we're trolling the subreddits. We're looking at all of the tweets. We're, we're all over the place. All of the fan videos. Um, the amount of people that clinged to the virtual cabin, which is a thing you can buy now if you go to f13.com. Nice. <laughs> 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 um, but like, the, the fan reaction to that has been absolutely insane. And that's a thing that like a handful of us put together on the side. Um, on this, like in our spare time, while we're also working on the game, and that's been that's been phenomenal. It's 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 definitely the biggest thing I think we've worked on as a studio. Um, that's that's you know our stuff. I don't know. I don't think words can describe it. It's it's bananas. It's just absolutely crazy. You guys said you were journalists. Yeah. Does that mean you wrote reviews about other video games? Yes, they did. I, I was I worked on the business business side. So will there be like advanced reviews coming out? Uh, yeah. We have been contacted by just about every major source within our industry, all asking about it. Like the, the every day. The hype is real. But nothing's been published. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, like you, uh, so I do I do social media. Like I'm the guy. If you guys tweet at us, like if you're tweeting or commenting or something on Facebook or Instagram, that's generally me responding. Uh, I I don't sleep more than six hours a day and I'm usually looking at that and my God, you guys hit us all the time. It's awesome, it's overwhelming and it keeps us going every single day because we know in this case, it's 26 years since the last game. I mean, 26, right? Is that math right? I, 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 Can I, you find math? You know I can't math, right? This is a run game. So I'm, I'm 20, I was born in the United States, 27. So yeah, uh, everyone, including Randy, and there's the perception out there that if you don't know the story of our game, that you assume it's a AAA title, and you assume 100 people are working on it, and there's a budget of $30 million, and they have a staff of 200 people or whatever. That's not the case. There's 20 to 30 to 40 of us total, and- If, if most. Exactly, and that includes us, and we're trying to do the work of a major studio, so the pressure is absolutely the heaviest they can ever be. No uh, but the difference, I guess, I should say the difference, but for us, we, we approached it first and foremost as super fans to, to Friday the 13th. It want, we wanted this game. It wasn't, it wasn't as if, um, 
that we were kind of sitting around doing our own thing and someone came to us and said, hey, would you like to make a Friday 13th game? And we weren't like fans of it, which I think in some instances, like something that's associated with a licensed IP, like usually the, the game's kind of, yeah. you know, probably because it didn't get landed in the hands of someone that was a fan. But th our story is very interesting in that we were, we were making a game called Summer Camp, which was a, a love letter to slashers of the 80s. So we, we were already like... Asking them out of the day. Yeah, right, right. We were kind of already flirting with Sean. Sean just happened to be like, oh, okay, let's go on a date, you know, and it, it worked out. Um, now we're porking. Or, or, right. <laughs> Um, but what, I mean, if you boil it all the way down to like, <coughs> like how like, how do you equate that hype? And it, it's for for all of us on, on this team, and you know, it comes from authenticity first and foremost, like without question. That is in every single conversation that we have internally, both from the design perspective to anything that's this development, it, even down to like PR and marketing. Every single thing that goes out the door, if someone sees it, knows about it, or hears it. It has to be 100% authentic. So I knew, even when we were making summer camp, I said, well, step one is surround yourself with people that are smarter than you and myself. So I immediately found Tom, and then I was like, he's not as smart as I thought he was, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I found, found Tom first. And it's not a joke, is <laughs> And uh, he, he and I were sharing emails back and forth, and I was like, yeah, man, I really love, love to get all the cane too. And he's like, oh, I mean, Tom's like, oh, hey, well, Everyone kind of knows each other, and so it just kind of snowballed off of that, and met with him, and got introduced to Harry, and kind of off we were, and then that's when we got the call. Yeah. I know they said yes to this like small little oh, indie thing, um, yeah. so that was pretty cool. But but yeah, so it, but that all comes from the same place, which was authenticity. Like we wanted to make sure we were doing it right. Yeah, if you care about the game, we wouldn't give a shit. We would go home, go to sleep at night, and not, we, we'd get eight hours of sleep. Right. <laughs> when, at, at six o'clock, we'd stop answering emails and stop talking to people online, but that's not the case. Yeah, I had a full head of hair before this game. He migrated to the line. He's like, don't just do all these Do we have questions? Yeah. Or, do you know, uh, how contextual are the kills? Like, uh, the, so we saw 13 out there, which, you know, Tom's painting to try to help create, but I'm sure he created a lot more than that for the game. Oh, there's so. over 40 or something. And there's going to be more. Yeah. yeah, and so, like, how contextual are they? Like, I saw, like, you close the door, you can slam the head in the door. Does that happen at two seconds? Maybe almost every place in that. We, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, we, 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 have to, we have to select kills that work well on several multiple surfaces. So you have to think about, like, flat surfaces and, and things like that. So, yeah, a lot of flat surfaces you can find, there's some kills, but then there's things like corner spots where there's doors and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, but we have to think in terms of like surplus, like how much can we get out of this kill in this sort of area? So it doesn't make sense to only have one kill that works in one area because the chances of <coughs> Jason and the counselor being at the same location at the same time to then do that kill, it's not really worth it. So instead you have to kind of spread those out. But, uh, but yeah, I mean basically when, you, when Jason has someone in a grab, um, he's gonna have a lot of decisions to make at that point. Uh, kind of as you turn and look through the it, through the world, you're going to see spots that you can take this person to, uh, and then do some of Savini's kills. Like like the, the video alone, just to give you an example, as you saw the video, the door kill is an example of a contextual kill where, from the grab position, you have to carry them to the door to perform it. Whereas if you look at the kill where he body slams them on the ground and steps on the girl's head, he can do that anywhere. So there are some that are environmental contextual, and then there are some that are just barehanded that you can do anywhere. And of course, we have a combat system. Jason, with Kane, and you can swing your weapon real time and chop off limbs and do things like that that don't require you grabbing them. So there are several ways that you can dispatch these counselors. Yeah, exactly. But there's going to be a percentage of you that will be a counselor and play this game just to be, just to have the honor of being killed by Jason right. in 49 ways. You know, it's almost like being insulted by Don Rickles. It's like it's an honor. <laughs> Any more questions? Mm -hmm. All right, we got one. From what I've seen on the game, there's just a version of Jason. I guess that's the back end in like three and four. And will, they, will each Jason play differently? Like, I guess it also goes to Kane. Did you play Jason differently? And was it yours the whole time? Like, will each Jason play differently? Or do you 
So yeah, um, all the Jasons do play differently, uh, but they're all still Jason, right? So there's going to be a lot of similarities, of course, but uh, but based off the movies and, and the, kind of the personalities imbued by, imbued by them uh, on the screen, you'll see them, they're able to do some things better than others. Uh, so it's, it's, it, it creates a variation that kind of caters to different play styles. So like you might, you might want to play a more stalkery Jason, so you want to select one where he did that, but then there's, there's some Jasons that run, right, in the movies. So, so Kane had to, had to actually go back and watch some of those actors that, that portrayed the Jasons that ran and actually, uh, actually try to mimic their movement, and and so you're gonna see you're gonna see Kane driving those characters, but he's doing it, you know, through a lens of looking at and, and actually trying to mimic, uh, you know, Brooke's Jason and whatnot. By the way, that's an exclusive that we just dropped. Jason can run in our game. So the, er the earlier Jasons who did run on the movies will actually run in our game. So there you go. So yeah, uh, we have two, three. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, and Tom's creating a brand new Jason that no one's seen before. So those are all the Jason models that you can unlock in our game. And they'll play a little bit differently based what? on like Randy said, or the way they did in the films. Okay. So me, I played a part that was Nash. Jason is kind of gay. Wow. So we'll ignore that. <laughs> This wasn't my question initially. I want to ask Anna, Anna a question, but can you run through that list of which Jasons are going to be on the game? Oh, yeah. Wow, I just wasn't expecting that. So we'll basically call him Baghead because we asked we asked to Steve Dash what he actually wore because no one really knows. It was a burlap sack. It wasn't a potato sack and it wasn't a burlap sack. Burlap bag. So people call him Sackhead, which is not right. Well, officially, he's Baghead from now on. So part two, part three, which is Brooker's Jason, and then part six, CJ Graham, and then seven came. A Kane, Nine Kane, and then the Sabidi remake, uh, Jason, that we haven't shown yet. Yeah, awesome. That's Which one? The Jason. Yeah, we had, we had a fan vote actually to vote in three new Jasons, and he came in fourth. So, who came in fourth? Uber Jason. Jason X. Who's that? Robot <laughs> Jason. Oh, the Robocop. Robocop. Yeah, the question is that. The question is that. Yeah, okay. Um, can you, uh, can you elaborate, Kane, on, I mean, I know you, you started in uh, New Blood, but uh, I know a bunch of fans probably, you know, wish, and I mean, CJ and this other, you know, Brooker, there's other Jasons that are super awesome and laid the, ground, the foundation for what you did, but, you know, some people wish maybe you had started a little earlier if there was, you know, revisionist history. Can you uh, talk about what it was like to, to, take, to take on those other Jasons and, you know what I'm saying, bring those alive? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, I tried to say this earlier before Tom got all pissy in the other uh, panel, but uh, by the time I started playing the character, it was known around the world. So uh, I felt very honored to be doing so, and I wanted to do everything I could to do the character justice. So I really took it seriously. Some of the other actors have even said themselves that it, it was just a job and they didn't really care and they kind of walked through the motions and whatever, but. I never approached it like that, so um, throughout the four that I did, I kind of tried, even though the look completely changed every movie, I tried to kind of keep a consistent performance, even though the, the look was totally different. And, you know, some of the movements that I kind of, like the breathing thing and all that, that I uh, feel like I added more to the character because I always thought it if Jason, in, in early films, if he was staring at you uh, motionless, he'd look like a mannequin. So I thought, how do I make it look more threatening? And that's when I tried the breathing thing, and I thought, that looks like he's still just staring at me, but he looks like he's about to do something any second. So that kind of stuff I tried to add to the character, and you know. What's that one? Once again. Yeah, Steve Dash. Next question. All right. So I know you guys appreciate your artistic freedom, but uh, what would be the chances of lining up your marketing with a Friday the Thirteenth movie to where you release your game at the same time as the movie comes out? Well, Sean. That's, uh, that's the. That's a perfect world, and um, the, the company that uh, is going to distribute the next uh, movie is Paramount, and Paramount has uh, a lot of Friday the 
13, but this year not. I said, really, really want to make the movie. And then there are other people in the company that don't care one way or another. And it's sort of, it's sort of been a, a step shot for about six years. Uh, I think we are at the point, there's a script, there's a director attached. Uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, actually starting starting to shoot in February. And it's like four years ago, I would have been really excited. In fact, four years ago, I was really excited because I thought we were about to shoot. <laughs> and this something has always happened. So we're going ahead with the game um, without regard to the to Paramount. If indeed Paramount uh, steps up and is actually going to release the movie at the end of 2017 as they say they are, then we have the opportunity to, to you know, uh, cross-pollinate. But we, we're, we're ignoring them for the time being. All right, all right. Uh, we have about eight minutes left, so I figure this will probably be the last question unless it's quick and we'll go through it. It's actually just a comment. Uh, grew up in the 80s. I want to say thank you very much for making my childhood fucking awesome. <laughs> Loved it. My children are going to grow up knowing exactly who Jason is, just like I did. And uh, one more thing, didn't know anything about the game. I'm a full-time dad, stay at home, have no idea what's going on in the real world. I'm glad I showed up. I know there's a game. Played the crap out of the Nintendo one. I'm really looking forward to the new one. Awesome.